Today on All Things 80s, building the most expensive Star Wars collection, part 4. <laughs> Welcome back to All Things 80s. Now here we are at part 4 in the series of looking at how much it's going to cost to build the most expensive Star Wars figure collection. So we've covered the figures that came out on Star Wars cards and Empire Strikes Back cards, therefore we're going to look at the Return of the Jedi cards. Now there were a ton of figures released in this line, so I'm going to split this into two parts. So this is the first part looking at the price it's going to cost for the most expensive Return of the Jedi figures. Okay, so here we go with part four, looking at building the most expensive Star Wars collection. Now, as we can see immediately, we have this issue with the bubbles turning yellow, which was not a problem on the first two lines. But anyway, Admiral Akbar, $490. And again, it's a beautiful card. It is punched, but this bubble has just turned yellow. Um, it's a pity. Very nice card, and of course the Emperor mail away, but 490 Lando Calrissian with his skiff guard disguise, 500 uh, Not the best uh, photography used here, but the bubble itself doesn't look too bad. Uh, unpunched, no price sticker, wonderful example, but $500. Nyan Num, um, $800, but this is of course the tri-logo card, and it appears as if the bubble here is pretty clear. A bit of a ding on the top corner there. Uh, a figure that I did have, but mine was the mail away, so I never had this card back. Um, a pretty, I guess it's a decent enough card back, but one that I never had certainly. But if you look here, it is possible that the tri logos were using a different type of bubble because that one has not yellowed. Next up, we're looking at Bib Fortuna. Um, not yellowed, which is good. Uh, the, the bubble itself bit slightly uh, damaged at the top there. I think also by this point in time, not only was it a, an inferior plastic in terms of it turning yellow, it was also a much, uh, I guess I was gonna say softer plastic, but I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but it was a plastic that was more prone to dings than certainly the previous two lines, but Bib Fortuna is $800. Now we have the Biker Scout coming in at $600, and it's not been graded, and as you can see, the card itself looks to be a bit warped. We've got the price tag, and of course, the yellow bubble, which is a real pity, because uh, it's a great, great figure, and if, if I were to have been a carded collector, I would not be happy having such a nice figure stuck behind a yellow bubble, especially with it being a, a figure that contains so much white plastic. This just makes it look terrible. Chief Chirpa. Now this is a Spanish card. Um, and if you can see here, the bubble is pretty decent actually. No complaints there. And of course, the free figure offer, but it is in fact in Spanish. And it, I don't believe it's telling you what figure you're getting. Uh, or something about, could be Bosk or Dengar. That's interesting that they were offering Empire Strikes Back figures during the Return of the Jedi line. Hmm. Anyway, he is approximately 615 US dollars. Emperor's Royal Guard, a thousand dollars. And again, it's graded, but look at how yellow that's turned. It's awful looking, truly awful. Um, unpunched, but does have the price sticker. Looks like, I can't really make it out, but it looks as if that what at one time said $5.85, but that can't be right. But yeah, it's a real, real pity they changed the, the uh, composition of the bubble because the card itself looks perfectly okay, but that yellow bubble's horrendous. Now we have Gamorian Guard, $350, graded, but definitely yellowed. 
uh, punched, no sticker. Yeah, 350. I mean, I would not be paying that much for something like that. General Medine, $325. This one, yeah, you can see where the bubble has started to turn. Real, real pity that. And again, I mean, the card is nice, but it's not like amazing. You can see a bit of stress around the uh, peg hole there. And it does look warped. So 325 for that. Klaatu, $375. And this one, not graded, but it has maintained a clear bubble, which is nice. Uh, price sticker, a couple of them from Sears, of course. Uh, I mean, the card itself is not particularly great. So 375 for that. Now, I have seen this figure in particular go carded for, you know, $45, $50. And, you know, despite this one not having the yellow bubble, I, I'm, I would not be happy paying that much money for such a mess of price stickers and a bit of a, looks like a bit of a tear around the peg hole. Anyway. On to another Spanish one, and this time we have Logre. Uh, not graded, but again, the bubble is clear. So similar to the Tri logos from Europe, the Spanish one uh, does in fact have an, a pretty damn good bubble to it. The card itself is nothing to speak of, although I'm sure some people do like the fact that it's a, a variation in terms of the language used. Um, I just want to see again if it's talking about the free figures. Uh, uh, Nye and Numb. So that was the one that I had as a child. So interesting. And if we look here, yep, a 53 card back. Now, I think, in fact, no, I don't think I know this would have been the last card back I ever had as a child because. Up until this point, I was still into Star Wars, but when the next wave came out, I had moved on, so I was not aware of some of the fi uh, figures that came later on the Jedi line. But five, sorry, $450 for Logre. Uh, we're now on to Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. So US dollars, we'll call that 940. Uh, again, look at this, terrible, terrible bubble. The card itself, is actually pretty good. It's not spectacular, but it's all right. But yeah, it's just a real shame that this material used for the bubble has has just degraded over time to the point where they're, they've turned yellow. I mean, this isn't the worst I've ever seen, but it's certainly not good. And it's certainly, in my opinion, it's not worth $940. Princess Leia in the Bausch disguise, $2,000. Uh, graded, obviously. Uh, immaculate card back and the bubble itself yeah you can see where it's uh where the border of the bubble has has turned no longer crystal clear um definitely not the worst i've ever seen uh reasonable actually but for two thousand dollars i don't think so rebel commando seven hundred dollars and pretty clear bubble not bad punched but so that's okay uh it got an 85 rating not bad yeah this one does look good however i would never pay 700 dollars for a figure that was or, or a character that was you know quite insignificant in terms of the storyline yeah 700 bucks not for me reese three thousand dollars and it is, of course, a Spanish card. And it's unpunched. There's no price sticker. And the bubble is wonderful. Wow. I mean, how much? 3000 I mean, that's not for me. It's not for many people, I would imagine. I mean, it is quite a unique item, given the, the fact it is a Spanish version. But, my God, three grand. Yeah, interesting. That I, It may have been a... An America versus Europe thing, whereby the the bubbles used in America are the ones that degrade quickly, whereas the European ones were different material that are not prone to yellowing. But it does look good, certainly, but not for three grand. Now we have 
squid head coming in at $900. And again, wonderful card back. Look at that. Perfect. And now where is this from? Uh, come on. Uh, I cannot read that. It says, uh, it looks like it's mentioning Amsterdam and Brussels. Very interesting. And they're talking about the Akbar mail away. You've got Naya Num, Darth Vader collector case, and the survival kit. Or is that like the the, the rebel commander's uh, supplies? I can't read that. But yeah, interesting item actually. $900. Uh, aside from the slight yellowing, this is a wonderful piece actually, very unique. Not at all bad. Very interesting. 900, I guess. And this is Weequay for $900. Again, it's turned yellow, but everything else is reasonably good. Yeah, pretty good. Interestingly enough, I actually had two of these as a child. Uh, it happened on Christmas of 1983, which was my big Star Wars Christmas, and I received two of these that year. So I think the following year, our school had a what they called a swap shop, where you could bring in your, you know, no longer wanted toys and swap them for something else. And I think I swapped this possibly for the Escape from Death Star game, but I don't remember. So anyway, that concludes part one of looking at the price of the most expensive Return of the Jedi figures. So if you were keeping score there, you would realize that for the first half of Return of the Jedi figures, we're looking at them costing us $14,745 for the first half. Still got part two of Return of the Jedi to come. Now, when we add that total to the amount we got for the Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back figures, we're looking at $205,750. So, quite a lot of money. Now, I want to say a big thank you to the Patreons. I want to say thank you to everyone who watched this and ask that if you liked it, please give it a like and also subscribe if you haven't already done so. And stay tuned for part 4.5, where we'll look at the remaining Return of the Jedi figures, and we'll get very close to concluding this series. So as always, thank you, and see you next time, and stay tuned for more videos from All Things 80s.